to luxury trip girl so today i'm going to show you if you want to take a quick one day trip out of paris somewhere else how to do it so first of all um pick where you want to go you can use like rail europe app and try to figure out the location so we're going to go to bruges in belgium today last time we went to brussels it was a little on the boring side so this is just one transfer pretty simple transfers in brussels so look on maps and see which train station in rail europe is closest to you and after you figure that out buy your tickets online on the app super simple get to the train station about 10 minutes before your train's going to arrive or going to leave and we are in uh du nord i think it's called my french really sucks and um so you can see here you just look at the board and figure out what's what just like any train station what uh what, what platform your train will be on and i'll show you how to do it how to how to run through everything today if you're a little intimidated by the process it's super and you'll have another area to explore for today. So we'll get going. premium class and it's a Thales train and um, so you just find your platform and after it's about 10 minutes before departure and um, yeah so um, this is like I said business class table and I did click table so we would have one so we could work and so on more comfortably and it's about a two-hour train ride into Brussels with a 20-minute connection All right, so when you get off the train, go downstairs. It's a little uh, complicated. You're not going to see your train listed on the, um, on the main board, so don't panic. Go downstairs, um, take a look at the inner city board, and then you will find your train to Bruges. Hi. <laughs> so here's an example. You'll see it didn't show Bruges on the Austin, <laughs> I don't know what that says. Um, but at the very end, it's Bruges. So it's Bruges. Time's it? All right, so here's the inner city train. This is in first class. Um, tickets are relatively inexpensive, regardless of the cost of service, because it's just a short train ride. So in about 20 minutes, we will have moved from Brussels to Bruges. Okay, so welcome back. Now I'm going to explain to you getting back because we wanted to come back an hour earlier. We jumped, we asked one of the gentlemen downstairs if um, the train that was here about to depart was the same train that we were taking. And it's not the same train. Um, but he said it stops at Brussels Midi and that's where you will connect back to Paris. Um, so when we got up to platform five, Brussels Midi was not listed on the list of stops, so we had a moment of hesitation and we asked one of the individuals up by the platform if um, this really did in fact stop at Midi and he said yes it was the third stop. So we got on the train and um, many of you may be able to relate to this. It gets a little bit stressful, right? So I'm hoping that any of you traveling to Bruges from from Paris will not suffer the same the same questions, but we got back to, um, got on the train and then took a look at, on the app for this particular station. And there is only one train station, by the way, in Bruges, so you can't get that part wrong. Um, just ask any taxi to take you to the train station. When we got onto the train, it looked as though, and I'll show you um, here in a screenshot, that it was not in fact stopping at Midi. So again, another moment of hesitation, like, okay, what is, what's going on here? Because it was stopping or is stopping in three stations in Brussels and there's only three. So for those of you wondering, you might think Midi sounds like mid and therefore it's central. It's not central, that's actually a different station. Brussels Midi is Brussels South. So French is um, Midi and in English it's South. So for those of you wondering how to get back, you'll take the train, if it says Brussels South and not Midi, it is the correct train. Unless we end up somewhere that we didn't expect, then I'll certainly update this portion of the video. But as of now, um, that looks like how to get how to get back. So we are going to try to jump on an even earlier train and see if we can get back into Paris a little earlier tonight. Otherwise, at least we will be in a bigger train station with more things to do. So more soon on this little kind of overview of how to get from Paris to Bruges in one day and back. 
Okay, so exhausting day, but finally on the way back to Paris. Um, so I tried to catch an earlier train, but they were sold out. So that's also a heads up, actually, if you are traveling on a weekend, there's not as many trains and they sell out quickly because people use the weekends to go between countries. Um, I know some of you had mentioned in other videos if you needed a passport, you do not. Once you're in the European Union, you're set, but um, I don't want to say that and have someone run into trouble. So just verify for yourself, please. Um, that's just a total CYA because I don't want to give someone bad advice, but I, I don't even carry the passport with me. So um, that's how confident I am for myself, but just for myself. And um, the other thing to watch out for, so Brussels Midi um, or South is, honestly, it's it's not the best place. It's not the most safe area. Um, you'll hear a lot of announcements over the intercom about watching out for pickpockets, watching out for suspicious people. And uh, it is really true, the pickpocket problem is kind of a bit out of control in some of these train stations. So getting on and off the train when people are kind of feverishly moving about, is one of the riskiest times as well as in the train station so somebody had asked me what's a sign right how do i know that there could be something happening you'll hear or see a lot of people in the train sorry for the noise you'll hear and see a lot of people in the train station like have boom boxes or they're talking really loud or they're playing music and so you tend to look at them you know i've done that in the past and i actually have had things stolen in the past so i'm speaking from experience and also many of my fellow travelers experiences that have been shared but if you notice that and you find yourself looking oftentimes those kind of things are decoys for the actual person trying to rip you off so my recommendation is just keep an eye on your stuff um, watch your surroundings kind of in the periphery um, that's how i handle it anyway everyone's thoughts about that are different. Um, I belong to a couple of different groups where people talk about that kind of thing, particularly solo travelers. I'm traveling with two um, young girls today and you know, trying to keep them safe as well and uh, just staying really vigilant and it's one of the reasons I don't travel with my passport because I don't want to spend two days at the embassy trying to get a new one, dealing with identity theft, global entry, redoing, or doing that, losing my credit cards. Also, most of Europe is cashless now. And I mean, like, even, well, also the UK as well. It's, it's, it's Europe, but it's no longer the EU, I guess. Um, so uh, my advice for that is, um, you know, as much as you can load onto Apple Pay, do that. But what it does is it makes our phones more vulnerable, right? So if you lose your phone, then you're you're also in, in big trouble. So for work reasons and also for financial reasons, I mean, I wouldn't have had my tickets. I wouldn't have had my um, a copy of my identification. Everything is on the phone. So one thing that just sort of general advice or travel tips, and I'll make a new video for this, but one of my travel tips is I, I don't ever trade in my last year's phone. I hold on to it and I just keep it in a, an electronics bag. And if I, um, if I'm traveling, I have that spare phone with me and I always have an encrypted backup of my phone on my laptop. So I do that a couple of days before I leave. And um, and then if anything were to happen, at least I can restore a Wi-Fi. Obviously they're not gonna be able to restore cell service remotely, but I can because I need to activate it, but I can restore um, at least the Wi-Fi component and still be able to have access to my stuff and it is encrypted on the actual laptop itself. So that's one of my travel tips and how I feel a little bit more secure having so much on my phone and relying on it so much. As we all are, I mean, I, they only scan our mobile tickets. Um, I have not seen one person with a printed ticket. I don't know anyone that uses printed tickets, to be honest. Um, so. Um, anyway, it's just yeah, you know, maybe as an added precaution, print it out. I don't, I don't know, but um, just some general tips when you're navigating through the through the terminals for the train stations. Just be really aware of your surroundings because obviously all of the train stations have problems, but Brussels Midi has a lot. Paris Nord has a lot. Anytime there's a lot of um, you know, big city stuff and, and a lot of tourism, of course, there's going to be even more. So you'll see the locals, how they carry their handbags, for example, mostly if a woman has her handbag, she's got it at a table in front of her on her lap, right? So I just take cues from the locals and then learn how to navigate accordingly. So anyway, just some tips as well as how to, how to get from um, Paris to Bruges and back. So this will be my final train. It was a few minutes late. Uh, that happens sometimes. It affects multiple trains. Um, it's usually a problem actually on the tracks. And um, so probably another hour or so. And I'll be back in Paris and definitely time to sleep. So I hope you found this useful. Um, again, straightforward process. Go onto one of the many apps, purchase the tickets, um, 
purchase, you, you obviously, sometimes you can't choose the seats, but you can choose the class of service and then they will just assign you seats based on how many people you have. If you want a table, make sure to click the button, show up at the train station, um, you know, at least 20, 30 minutes early so you can kind of get your bearings. I think 20 minutes is good. You're not gonna go through, you know, security and passport control and all that stuff because you're staying within the European Union. And then get on the train and then usually have between 10 and 20 minutes to connect. So that's where it gets a little bit sketchy for some people. First few times I did it as well. I'm trying to very fast find another train and often they're inner city trains, which means it's not the same platform level or area as where you came in from on international or somewhere else. So, um, quickly ask someone if you don't know just ask them where's the inner city train or whatever you see on your ticket uh, and then you can move through more quickly but usually you'll go down if it's from if it's from Paris to Bruges you will go downstairs across underneath the bridge go back up and then you'll find the inner city train so that will save you a lot of time and um, yeah and then getting back try to keep the connection if you can and give yourself 20 minutes um, because if the trains are even five minutes late, you could miss your train. And on the weekends, they are packed, like packed and <laughs> packed. So anyway, I, I feel bad making this a video looking so haggard, but it's been a very long day, exhausting one with no sleep. So, uh, and two children. <laughs> so um, if you have any questions about how to get from one place to the other, please don't hesitate to leave me a message. Now leave me a comment and I'm happy to help. And um, thank you for watching. And this concludes my video of Paris to Bruges and back, um, back in Paris Nord Station and back to the hotel for a long slumber. Hope you enjoyed this video.